Hello, it's Scott Manley here with episode 51 of Interstellar Quest. We have been updating our beamed power network, and uh, now we are discarding this waste product of our technological advance advancement, letting it fall to the surface and uh, surely to its death. However, it is so unaerodynamic that its descent velocity is actually surprisingly low, and instead it will find itself landing in the middle of the desert, more or less intact, to be discovered by some future engineering archaeologists wondering, what were they thinking? Moving on, we uh, have this current generation station, and the, all, these, um, all these radiators are still the, using the old technology. Well, it turns out that Interstellar lets you upgrade items after they've been launched. Now, Technically, you're just supposed to right-click on it, but I kind of at least... I didn't want to just do it until I'd sent a supply mission to the spacecraft. So, I sent that mission, and now I'm going to upgrade all these parts. You see that? Upgrade, and it becomes a graphene radiator. Instead of being a, a, a heat pipe, it's now a graphene radiator. People ask how radiators work in space. Well, they work because of radiation. And I'm not talking, like, nuclear radiation. I'm talking about, you know, um, thermal radiation. Uh, radiators on Earth tend to heat things by convection, which is very confusing when they're called radiators. Anyway, the other thing I need to do with this space station is we need to maintain the reactor. We have picked up a decent amount of actinide waste, which will be poisoning our nuclear reactors and slowing down everything, making it less efficient than it might otherwise be. So uh, I start the, the lab on the reprocessing, and it starts to take away the actinide waste. It doesn't replace the fuel that's missing. Well, we have to shut down the reactor for that, but that will raise the efficiency of the reactor back up to something reasonable so that we can uh, continue to beam, this, beam the power out at high efficiency. The other thing that I forgot to do here is to upgrade the, upgrade the generator, which can now use a different heat cycle. Anyway, as it happens, I pretty much timed this perfectly because I had a, a date with the EVE Explorer and the processing literally finished like a minute before I had to go to this alarm. So <laughs> it was it was like totally random, but for reals. So the EVE Explorer consisting of uh, Sonzen, Durdos and Albus Kerman has to make a number of maneuvers to actually encounter Eve. Right now they are on a date to fly past it and not come close. But uh, they have about 400 meters per second delta V they need to get to actually change onto an encounter. And then they will trim from there. So there they go, accelerating at a as fast as they can using their three nuclear engines, generating about 0.2 g of thrust here. It's not great, but uh, it's more than enough when you have months and weeks to uh, deal with the encounters and things like that. So uh, yeah, at this point, time acceleration, I'd say. And old me was absolutely correct with that whole time acceleration thing. Yes, four times time acceleration because you really don't want to sit through this in real time. It uh, is, it's about 200 seconds, which is about just over three minutes is what it would take to do this. But thankfully, due to the power of time manipulation, we were able to condense that down to a more manageable value as I talk to you about space poop and other things to fill the time. Um, yes, you see, this is it. Time acceleration means that I spend less time discussing space poop. We all know that that never ends well. Anyway, uh, the encounter is almost there. We're just seeing the orbit coming up, and obviously a lot of stuttering as I'm moving things around here. And there we have an encounter. Now, a little bit of trim to actually bring that encounter down as close as possible to the planet. We need to get to around 75 kilometer, um, to a 75 kilometer uh, encounter, so that the aero braking will or aero capture will occur. Um, if we do it too deep, of course, we are going to be permanent residents, and in fact, I don't think I can land this thing if we were to encounter that permanent resident situation. Hopefully, that won't happen. Uh, because otherwise, that would not be cool. Eve is one of those places you want to go and settle down. Gilly is those pla one of the places you want to go when you actually want to leave and return home and not, you know, suffocate to death in a purple hostile atmosphere. Well, anyway, moving on. 
We have our EVE satellite. This one, of course, was sent after the fact when we forgot that we had uh, magnetometer. We hadn't brought magnetometers. This is, of course, all beamed power, and uh, it's getting about 50 megawatts, which is kind of nice, but uh, with a little bit of adjustment, I can do even better than that. That's always great. Um, see, yeah, almost just over 50. I think we're just getting the station in orbit. There's two ground stations, and when those come visible, I can get almost two gigawatts. And so we need to adjust our orbit more or less into the plane, because ultimately we want to encounter Gilly, and we don't want to have our... our we don't want to be totally out of the plane. I mean, we're, we're cool and all that, but we, we could at least pay some attention to the orientation of the targets here. No, uh, I mean, seriously, this thing has like 60 kilometers per second of delta V or something ridiculous like this. It could go anywhere. In fact, it's probably going to be able to land on Gilly, depending upon the time of day and the orientation with the uh, planet Kerbin. But anyway, yeah, I, I more or less make this correction to put it down into the plane for no apparent reason. I mean, really, it doesn't actually matter. But ultimately, I'm going to want to rendezvous with Gilly because it is the cool place to be. And, uh, yeah, I'm noticing now, in retrospect, in post-me phase, that, oh yes, this whole thing is going the wrong way. It's actually going to be going the opposite way around the planet Eve as the, plan as the moon Gilly does. Not that it matters. Anyway, you can see that we're getting about 1.5 gigawatts from our uh, beamed power. That means we're probably getting at least one of the ground power stations now, uh, plus maybe orbital power stations and other things. But yeah, let's... Uh, actually move in towards Eve. Eve, the hazy purple planet type thing that has been mysterious in the Kerbal night sky forever. Look at it. It's definitely looking a lot fuzzier now, and I'm presuming that's because the the clouds, the beautification mod has added a thick layer of clouds that makes it almost impossible to see the surface features. That's going to make actually trying to land the probe in a reasonable location somewhat harder. So I'd set up my maneuver node, and rather foolishly, uh, or rather, I didn't really think about things ahead of time, but in its current location, I can get about 300 kilowatts of power, which isn't very much. That's coming from that solar satellite that is a long way from actually getting to the sun yet. Uh, at that rate, it's going to take two to three days to decelerate. Fortunately, inside a, a few hours, we know that satellites will come above the horizon, or Kerbin will rotate, and we'll get much better thrust. Anyway, while we're here, let's do some science. Log the gravity data. The sensor records slight variances in gravity as you pass over a massive crater site. There are massive craters on, on, uh, on Eve. Surely they all burn up before then. Okay, let's do that again just to check. Nope, same message, but a little more science. The boys in the lab are going to love this stuff. It's dynamite. We also have the magnetometers that... The real reason this space probe is here is just for the magnetometers. We have two of them. Which one shall I use? Shall I use Miney or Mo? Okay, log magnetospheric data. Are those cosmic rays purple? My goodness, that would be an amazing discovery since, you know, Chernyanko radiation is typically blue and purple is made of purple and red, or blue and red. Are those cosmic rays purple? I believe they must be. Anyway, with uh, the theoretical supply of power... Coming up to much more manageable levels, we're able to decelerate a little more quickly and get ourselves into our first orbit around EVE so that we can actually start studying it close. Now, we've only done high-altitude science. The next thing we want to do is, of course, get down close enough to do low-altitude science. That means a burn here to slow... or not a burn, but a rocket thrust event, a plasma expulsion event to slow down our orbit just enough. We don't want to aerobrake here. That would be... Yeah, this thing can avoid aerobraking completely because it has such a... Uh, pr uh, it has so much delta V. It It is blessed with so much delta V that it could probably finish up here and go to, go to Jewel just for a laugh and then, I don't know, leave the system, come back. They are 150 kilometers is a good altitude to be doing science without worrying about that whole aerobraking thing. And so we rotate around the planet, accelerate, and now we come down to admire the planet Eve much closer up. This is really the first time I've looked at it with these new fangled clouds. 
And if I look carefully, it looks like the clouds are actually moving. Either that or there's some weird graphical glitch. I think what they're doing is having the clouds move around the planet really, really quickly. You see, Venus, interestingly enough, it rotates incredibly slowly. It actually rotates backwards. But the clouds move around Venus much faster than its rotation. It's all so strange and interesting. Obviously, the cloud rotation is driven by the, the sun. Okay, and here comes the sun. Da, 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 da. Here comes, there we go, we got it coming out of the side of the planet. And since we now can see what we're doing, we can find all the buttons, we should do some more science. And we can do a little more science here than before, because we have access to not just gravity, but we have access to temperature science here. Okay. You detect a definite heat signature from the planet below. I should expect so. And gravity data. This sensor spikes every time you orbit over an ocean. Interestingly, that would imply that the oceans are higher density than the rock. Maybe they're mercury. How about the magnetosphere? What does it say? This location seems safe enough from cosmic rays. Yes, if you really want to be safe from cosmic rays, you want to be on the surface of EVE. You will also be safe from uh, escaping, safe from uh, flying, and various other things. Okay, and looks like... Oh, oh! Oh, dear. I was adjusting this to get some more power, but I think I've managed to tangle my antenna. Don't break! You detect a definite heat signature, blah, blah, blah. Excellent. Good data. And not only do we have to transmit all the magnetospheric data, but we also have to collect some that we will remove from the satellite by... Uh, uh, an astronaut. Okay. Oh, no, turning it the wrong way. No, no, kind of detangle. D wrong way, wrong way. Come. No, don't break, don't break. Don't break. Yeah, well, there we go. Whew. Okay. We almost had a Galileo moment there with the antennas getting tangled. That would not be good. Uh, well, I was more worried. If they get tangled, is okay. If they break off, that would be bad. Okay, so we've got spare magnetospheric data. We need to collect low data and high data, and then we need to go to Gilly so that we may pass it off to our friends so that they can take it back. The sensor spikes every time we orbit over an ocean. Yay, mercury oceans. People seem to be not sure as to whether the oceans are made of mercury or rocket fuel or various other substances. And to be honest... Since uh, none of those things are really supported in the game, we'll just have to imagine that it's all of the above. Okay, so now we've made our, now we've figured out our orbit. We wanna, we wanna start rendezvousing with Gilly. As I said, Gilly is the cool place. That's where all the hipsters go because you know, you don't. Gilly's not a place you go to settle down. Oh look, you can really see the clouds moving now. That's much prettier. That is really nice. I really should probably get the update to the beautification mod that I've seen. You can just about see the seas here. And that's going to be important because I'm going to have to try and land my space probes uh, in the sea and on land. So I'm going to have to very carefully do this. Anyway, now we are back out at Apple Apps. We can, of course, turn our orbit around as efficiently as possible. Really, it's not about the Delta V, the, the limitations here. Although we do have huge amounts of Delta V, it's mostly about being, you know, not wasting forever doing said things. 600 megawatts may seem like a lot, but it really doesn't provide a huge amount of thrust here. Uh, at least it's better than the 350 kilowatts that I get from the solar satellite at this time. Boy, that will be amazing when it comes online for reals and is able to generate, you know, gigawatts of power just by orbiting the sun and I don't have to worry about fuel and things like that. Anyway, the important thing here now with getting a rendezvous with Gilly is because you don't know how much thrust you're going to have during the encounter, unless you're very, very careful and plan it so you make sure that you're facing Kerbin. I'm going to try and get a low velocity encounter, which means more or less flying around at a tangent to the orbit, an osculating encounter, as they might say, uh, and make sure that I do this at Apple Apps. So the relative velocity will be as low as possible. And that way, if there's not enough power, I will just be able to wait an hour and get some extra power. And hopefully the rendezvous will be possible, but... Uh, and not a, not a series of flying back and forth and missing everything. So yeah, I put myself into a much larger orbit. Still need to make some corrections to the actual inclination at this time. But uh, 
In the meantime, I have to fix my encounter with the EVE spacecraft, the EVE Explorer, which it too is coming in on the wrong direction, so it needs to make some uh, some adjustments to make sure that its, its uh, orbit is in the plane, more or less a plane aligned with Gilly. So a quick burn in this direction, and that brings our Apple apps up, so we need to bring that down so that we save as much Delta V by performing a, an aero capture maneuver. This doesn't have heat shields, but the aero capture should happen at a high enough altitude that we don't need to worry. Although, to be fair, I do have slightly lower deadly re-entry settings. I just want to make deadly re-entry deadly if you try to go straight down vertically through the atmosphere. Anyway, 60 kilometers is roughly what the simulations told me was a good place. Those oceans look flammable. You'd like to see the explosion if you dropped a match in it. There, you see, somebody thinks it's rocket fuel, other, or other people think it's mercury. Okay, and we're going to get some EVA science. All sorts of fascinating science. EVA report. From this position, you can clearly make out lakes and oceans some of some kind on the surface below, although you can't see them through the clouds. Uh, what else do we have on this spacecraft we can do? Uh, well, we can review the stored data and transmit it. All very good stuff for the boffins back home to work on to make their better spacecraft. Okay, we have a lab, so of course we can do materials and goo science for the win. The, I think most of the science is actually on this nose cone here. Observe the materials. What do you think? The materials bay, after an apparent deliberation, produces a liquid which is almost, but not quite, entirely unlike tea. And while I ponder that reference to the classic Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy game, I shall move some space, uh, some uh, of the crew into the lab so that they can actually process it and get the maximum amount of science from this fascinating discovery of tea. Yeah, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy was a game, I think it was 30 years old actually. It was a text adventure game by Infocom, and uh, one of the things I remember was that while exploring the universe and trying to not die by, you know, due to the problems of Vogon poetry, you would have, in your inventory at all times, Arthur Dent would have no tea. You couldn't drop the no tea, you couldn't do anything with the no tea, you could just complain about the fact that you had no tea. Infocom made the best text adventures, but uh, somewhere in the late 80s they decided they wanted to build a database instead, and that destroyed the company, which is a shame. Okay, so let's review this and make it more better, and so we can send it back. Also, Mystery Goo Containment Unit. The goo has become rubbery and bounces all around the container. Ah, at least they can spend, uh, spell bounces correctly. The goo looks purple. Is it just the lighting or did it actually change? Ooh, who knows? Mysterious powers of Eve being applied to all our experimental datas. So we have our Gravimax, negative gravioli. The sensor records... Oh, yes, we've got this already. And maybe the lab will let us collect a little more... Oh, yes, we got... Oh, no, that's material science. Well, we can send that back to the boys in the lab, transmit it, and we'll clean these experiments sooner or later. We are pretty much stuck waiting in real time for all these things to happen. Seismic accelerometer, no good. Uh, what else do we have? We have... Um, we have, we have, we have nothing. We have nothing else that we can do on this particular thing. All this stuff is designed for high orbit or low orbit or gilly. Places without an atmosphere. What's really interesting is the atmosphere probes. They have some cool stuff on them that we'll be able to take down. We can actually use these experiments while the other ones are messed up. Come on, lab, process away and transmit that. Yes, we're going to transmit that and then we'll clean you up later. What? Uh, that? No, no, that, that's a fuel tank. That is not a mystery goo containment unit. There's a mystery goo containment unit. What do you have to say again? The goo is starting, start staring towards the planet. Is it homesick? <laughs> that I guess in some of these are from the the crowdsource community uh, stuff. Okay, so we have all the science. We're going to clean the experiments and then we will be performing aero braking in the coming episode. But until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.